I mean, Carrie's going to tell you a little bit more about how she came in the Thank you. Kia ora koutou, I'm Kerry Matheson and I teach with Rod and Rose at Ridgeway School. Um, I also predominantly use the digital learning objects um, initially with um, preparing students for science fair and for fair testing and so um, um, initially we talked about what science fair was all about and what, you know, where we were going to go with this, what we hoped to achieve. And, and then we looked at a couple of different sites. Initially the first one was one that I shared with the class and we did as a class and it was quite a simple site using weights and um, parachutes <coughs> and gradients to move a truck along track. And, um, and then I let the kids work in groups of three on the computer with the digital learning object to experiment with that. But it was quite simple in, in terms of its um, concepts and its application which as a starting point for my year seven and eights was quite effective. However, very quickly, um, it, it whetted their appetite and they wanted something that was a little more complex. And so we then went on to one that we'd worked with, um, uh, we'd discovered um, through the TKI and the Digistore. And, um, and like the one that Anik's going to show you a little more of shortly. Um, and that allowed the students to um, change a large number of variables and it was a little bit more complex and, and it gave them a greater depth of understanding of the fair testing process. And um, what was really wonderful to see was that it was really value added because at the end of that they could take that um, understanding of how to fair test and choose a topic for their own science fair and then use that to help them to design their own fair test. Um, and look at selecting variables and changing variables to ensure that they could get reliable data um, and, and consistent outcomes. What I found really, really valuable about using the digital learning objects as a starting point as opposed to previous years when I've done science fair was that in the past I've used an experiment called the magic bean which some of you as teachers m may have come across before where the kids create a little magic bean which is a little bit like those you know weevils wobble but they won't fall down a little bit like that and has a marble on the inside and the marble can move around and you can roll it down a, a gradient and you can change the gradient and you can change the um, the surface of the slope and see how that affects it and and although we'd have a lot of fun doing it it was quite time consuming in terms of making the materials that we needed and and then there were often other things that would impact on it that were hard for the students to manage in that situation, which to learn the process of fair testing um, made it a little bit more complicated and added extra challenge. And I found with the digital learning objects, it took away some of those, um, some of those problems and allowed them to, to change those variables and get a clear understanding. And, and then to go back and create their own science fair test and have it not necessarily go the way they would hope um, was something that they took more out of uh, because they knew how changing one variable at a time in a controlled situation should work. And so, you know, it really sort of deepened their understandings and, and enabled them to sort of carry that knowledge over to, into their own creation of fair test. Um, for my class also there was an enormous amount of engagement and enjoyment. The students really enjoyed working together. There was really rich discussion around what was happening. There were arguments sometimes, not in a heated sort of sense, but you know in terms of what should happen next or how they should do it. Um, <coughs> with one of the experiments that we did, I, in looking through it first, I realised that the challenge that they would face was that they would gather the data on one screen and then they would need to input the data on the next screen. And obviously that would mean that they would need to remember the specifics of the data that they'd gathered for a changing each variable. And so it, it became apparent to me that the thing that they were going to need was a hard copy of the, um, of the table that they needed to input the data onto so that they could record that and not try and remember it. Um, and that was really good because again, like for Rose, it helped to give them a focus and, um, and they could then take that data back and put it in their book and keep it as an example of what the fair test data looked like and how they could record it, which helped them when it came to presenting their data for their science fair. Um, there were some really wonderful things that came out of it for us as a school because it was very much the early stages 
and it was our first um, attempt at using digital learning objects. And I guess the most wonderful thing is that um, through seeing us take part in this, the principal and the board of trustees have seen the enormous value and they've made a commitment get to getting um, three interactive whiteboards for our school so that we can make much more, much, much better access of, um, or have much better access to these Digistore digital learning objects in the future. And um, fortunately through a wealthy benefactor, the school has also been donated six computers and we're going to get another six top-end computers next year. And so, you know, this is allowing us to use a lot more of these in the classroom. Um, I've also used them in mathematics and um, one in particular that, that I'd like to talk about is um, having a group of kids who are working at um, stage eight going away and working with um, solving really large multiplication problems by breaking it down into smaller multiplication problems. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the sorts of things, but um, you know, if you're looking at a grid type system, um, you know, if you're looking at 42 multiplied by 80, and then moving um, the aspects on the grid so that the multiplication gets broken up into, you know, um, four times six and you know eight times seven or, or, or whatever, so that they can then work it out in a lot more simplistic way. For example, well, not even an example, but a real example. Um, and so that was something that um, that the students really enjoyed because it was a practical exercise that reinforced the, the work that we'd done through um, through our group work on the mat. So that they we'd sat down and we'd talked through the principle in in terms of the numeracy project and looked at how we could. Um, solve those sorts of problems and then they could go away and work independently on the computer and practice the skill um, using the digital learning <coughs> objects. So it was really nice to see that um, there's a correlation between what's happening in mathematics and the numeracy project and some of the um, digital learning objects which are available to support that learning. So that was, that was really marvellous and I know that Rod's, Rod's used some of those as well. Um, and you know obviously it was very much the initial stages for us and there were lots of really great things out, that came out of it and there were lots of huge challenges and there are lots of things that we would do very differently and um, so next year we've already got plans in place for how we want to um, try and integrate digital learning objects into the focus that we're going to have in inquiry learning and science fair and then leading into um, a project that we're taking part in called Take Action for Water and trying to tie it all together so that there's these really strong links throughout the year that, um, you know, that bring it all together and these digital learning objects can underpin um, the students' knowledge and, and growth and understanding in, in science and technology. So, yeah, wonderful experience and a great opportunity. Mm. Were you able to see some kind of transfer from the learning that happened with the children in, into other areas, maybe? Um, Certainly, with the with the science fair, in terms of using using the um, science fair um, digital learning objects, and then adapting that to the topic that they had chosen, because they then needed to design their own fair test specific to to their focus area or their their question and their science fair, and and it was really interesting seeing them go through the process of talking about what variables could they change and how you know would that variable be. You know, could they test that in a in, in a um, in a controlled way, um, in order to get, you know, would it would it lead to the results that they were hoping that they would need to answer their question? And so, yeah, there was a really a good transfer of that knowledge from working with the digital learning object to then creating their own fair test and analysing the results. Yes. That's obviously one of our, you know, we, we worry, we think about the long term implications of the, we don't see it as an intervention. That takes place in a short period of time. Thank you very much.